Let's move to the other strategy that I want to discuss, that is volume targeted ventilation, also known as volume guaranteed ventilation. And I think the volume guaranteed is not a good term. I think we should talk about volume targeting. Uh, and essentially what volume targeting is, is that you give the ventilator the responsibility for adjusting the pressures, the inspiratory pressures, to maintain or to deliver a tidal volume that you set. The clinician decides how many milliliters per kilo that baby needs. And then if the tidal volume gets smaller, like in this situation here, the ventilator detects that reduction in tidal volume and increases automatically the peak inspiratory pressure, re-establishing then a normal tidal volume. More important than this function, I think, is the fact that when you are using volume targeted ventilation, the ventilator also will reduce the peak inspiratory pressure if the baby is able to generate the tidal volume with his own respiratory effort. So here we switch from pressure limited ventilation to volume targeted ventilation at this point, and you see how the tidal volume gets more stable and the peak inspiratory pressure that is required to generate this tidal volume is substantially lower than what we were giving to this baby when he was on pressure limited ventilation. So volume targeted ventilation provides a automated weaning of peak inspiratory pressure as the baby improves his lung compliance and improves his respiratory effort. Uh, there, is, uh, there are several <clears throat> studies where uh, uh, these two modalities, control ventilation, pressure limited, and uh, volume targeted ventilation have been compared in uh, uh, premature infants. And the first uh, the result shown very clearly in this meta-analysis is that volume targeted ventilation ended up reducing the duration of ventilation. Why is this? Because as, as I mentioned, Volume targeted ventilation will win the pressures as soon as the baby is able to generate a normal tidal volume. So shorter duration of ventilation. What about death or bronchopulmonary dysplasia? An outcome that obviously is of great interest to all of us. You see here that although most of the showed a reduction in the incidence of death or BPD, the effect is relatively modest. It becomes significant only when you analyze all these babies, uh, all these uh, studies together. None of them independently showed a beneficial effect. So the meta-analysis shows that death or BPD was 32% in the babies ventilated with volume targeted versus 43 in the babies that were ventilated with pressure-limited ventilation, with a number needed to treat of eight patients. Uh, we are careful in interpreting this data because many of these studies had uh, some limitations in terms of study design. Uh, each of them used different strategies for volume targeting uh, in terms of initiation, type of ventilator, volumes used. And the most important point is that it's not clear what strategy was used in the babies in the control group. All we know is that they didn't uh, receive volume targeted ventilation, but we don't know, we don't have much details in terms of what volumes, what pressures, what strategies for ventilation were used. So this is, these are interesting findings, but I would not call this a, a very solid evidence that volume targeted ventilation reduces BPD. The other effect of volume targeted ventilation is shown in this trace in one of our patients when we go again from pressure-limited ventilation to volume-targeted ventilation. And this is a trace of pulse oximetry with uh, uh, saturations and heart rate. And you can see very clearly that this baby is having lots of fluctuations in saturation, like most of our patients when they, when they are on mechanical ventilation. And we can see that these oscillations continue on volume-targeted ventilation, but the severity of the desaturations is significantly less. And we have uh, done, we have published two papers showing that this is exactly what happens in a group of patients where we compare pressure control versus volume uh, targeted, uh, 
where you can see that the frequency of episodes of hypoxemia does not change, it's exactly the same, but the duration of hypoxemic episodes below 85% and also below 75% decreases with volume target. What happens here? We know that these desaturations are many times related to fighting of the baby with the ventilator. The, baby, the infant doesn't allow the baby to introduce a normal tidal volume. So the ventilator on volume targeted mode will increase the pressure automatically and the baby will recover from these episodes quicker. 